Salutations readers. Welcome to or welcome back to the Sudoku Writer channel. My name is Inkechi and for today I'm going to talk about all the books that I read in November and December of 2023. <laughs> Y'all, I know you're going to watch this in 2024 because I know I know this because I'm recording this on December 31st. So please tell me, how the hell are we in 2024 already? Like I blinked and it's like, oh, 2023 is over. What happened? This year was a lot. I mean, it was really cool. I think it's pretty good. Reading wise, I read more mediocre books, even in these last couple of months, because I was mad dash and trying to like, who, what books am I gonna finish out the year? You know, I wanna make sure I finish out the year on a good note. And I will say for the most part, I did finish out, and go, uh, finish out on a really good note. But content wise though, November was kind of a shit show for me, as far as like what I, I literally had plans and then they fell on the wayside. So then I switched gears to make an end of the year content and that's where we're at right now. So that's pretty much my overview of the past couple of months because honestly, I just, I don't know. Honestly, let's just get to the books that I read in November. So I read nine books in November, total of 2,204 pages. Not a lot of pages, honestly, but I literally listened to a lot of audiobooks though. 91.45, that's a, that's a lot of hours. For an audiobook for audiobooks in a month and thankfully the average rating is a 4.38 which is really really good i'm really happy with that average rating honestly so yeah that's pretty much all the stats so let's just get to the books that i read in, in november so first up i finished out the Fumo alchemist manga series i finally read omnibus number eight and Omnibus number nine both of these five stars i read both of them so fast like i read this one in a day and the other one in a day so like I took a whole weekend to just marathon these two uh, manga omnibus volumes. So surprising, but honestly, this is like the mo like pretty climactic, action-packed finale of this manga series. And to be quite honest, I do I really love this series. I love the anime brotherhood specifically. I just really love this manga series. I don't really know what else to say besides the fact that I loved every single one of the omnibus volumes. And then after I finally finished off that manga series, I finished off another series because I was like, nah, I need to finish some series this year. How is it that I've only read one and then now two? Nope, we gotta finish another one. So I finally finished the Radiant Emperor duology with He Who Drowned the World by Shelley Parker Chan. I recently got this for Christmas, so thanks to my mom for that. And this is the conclusion to the Radiant Emperor duology sequel to She Who Became the Sun. And y'all, this was a fantastic, I mean, fantastic conclusion to the Reigned Emperor duology. Okay, I read this one solely via audio. So that I did with the first book as well. I read this entire duology via audio. Now, I will have to say, I don't quite recommend the audio because I was confused with certain names, with certain people and their names. And I don't think Natalie Nottas did a good job differentiating between who was who. Like it took me a while with some context clues to know like, oh wait, who is this one person and who's this other person? Because these names are sounding so similar to me, I don't know who is who. Which is why I want, I asked to have this duology physically because after I read He Would Join the World, I knew I had to get it physically because I'm like, wait, who was who again? This was a whole star better than like she, uh, she who uh, became the sun. I give this one 4.75 stars. Now I gave it, I didn't give the full five stars because I was being petty because a particular character, specifically Ma, there wasn't enough Pama content for me, y'all. Like, okay, I, I was a little, I was being a little bit nitpicky here, but I wanted more Ma content, okay? Give me more Ma. Everything else though, pretty much perfect. It just did everything regarding She Who Became the Sun, but even better. It did a fantastic job of fully exploring the themes regarding gender, sexuality, and seeing how these morally bankrupt characters will do anything to, achieve, to obtain the throne to become the new emperor. And I'm like, damn, like the way that these characters go through, I'm like, you, you real, I mean, these are morally bankrupt characters, but there's always something about them that they, they still f experience some form of, of oppression of some kind, whether it's because of their gender or because of their sexuality or a mixture of even both. And just seeing how they, how they go about achieving the throne. It's just so, so fantastic. Charlie Parker Chan, I'm gonna, I wanna read more, whatever they write, okay? Whatever they write next, I'm gonna read it. Next up, I read Calling for a Blanket Dance by Oscar Hosea, I think is the author's name. I read this because this was a 12 Rex by 12 Friends recommendation. I read this one physically and via audio, so it was a hybrid read. And I give it 3.75 stars. 
So this one is more like a multi-POV family saga kind of story where we're following this indigenous boy, but we're seeing like his other family members, like his grandparents, aunts, uncles, parents, and all that, siblings even, and all the way down to the main guy here. And I thought it was really good. I liked the writing, but the narration is not the greatest. But I do think it's because of the writing. Now, I did say I liked it, but I didn't love the writing because there's a lot of telling and less showing, despite this being a pretty emotional read. Like, it was emotional because a lot, because you gotta, like, look at the content warnings, y'all. It's a pretty, it, it's kind of a heavy story. As much as I liked it, I wish that it was less telling and more showing so we can really feel what the characters are feeling because I felt like we were just being told what these characters were feeling and experiencing instead of us the reader experience it with them you know so I didn't like that and it definitely you can definitely feel that from the narration so I don't quite recommend the audiobook honestly it is it is two it is there are two narrators even though it's multi POV one of the narrators actually is the author who narrates the male relatives and the male main character and then we have this second narrator who narrates all the female uh, relatives. I definitely prefer the author's vo narrative voice than the other ma narrator. So like, yeah, I, I will have to say the the audiobook is kind of wonky there. So not quite recommend the audiobook, but I do recommend at least reading it with your eyes. That's Clown for a Blanket Dance. And honestly, I'm quite glad that I got a chance to read this one. It's a debut. I don't think it came out this year. I don't remember when it came out, but it came out in like a year or two ago or something like that. So if you haven't read it, I recommend giving it a try. Next up, I read Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. This is his debut novel. I did read Small Worlds during the summer, and I told myself, you know what, let me try reading his debut. And y'all, I loved his debut. I give it 4.75 stars. I didn't think it was perfect. I loved his writing, and I loved the intimacy regarding the writing, but I felt like there wasn't substantial character development regarding these characters. I won't say they're stale, but they're not, it's not actual, big enough character development for me so I can't give it the full five stars but writing wise this is really really good y'all like if you want personable intimate lyrical second per POV kind of writing then this is the book for you okay and it's so short too it's less than 200 pages and I've been annotating this thing like I didn't annotate like kind of crazy but I did underline so many things and I'm just like damn like you you wrote that like Kilbazula Nelson really wrote that then I read The Good House by Tanana Reef Du this is my first Tanana Reef Du book and I read this because it was for the Buzz Wordathon that's hosted by Kayla from Books and Lala it's for the word good in the title and I read this one via audio it was so so good it was really long though it was a really long audiobook it's like 22 hours but I really had a great time with it now I get, did give it with 4.75 stars I thought it was really, really good but I just felt it was kind of a little bit long generally a little bit but I really like this kind of fantastical paranormal ish kind of horror and I definitely want to read more of Tanana Reef Do's works in the future. I'm like, I see it. I'm I'm a girly that gets it. Okay, I truly get the girlies that love Tanana Reef Do. Like the way that this was written, the multiple is multi POV and has multiple timelines, but it is also pretty dark and heavy. So content warning though on suicide and death. So look up Conjured Warrens though on The Good House. But it was a really, really good book though. Next, I read The Secret Lives of Church Ladies by Disha Filia. This one I listened to it via audio. I love this one. I loved this short story collection. Like this is like, I don't know about y'all, but this is the first time I've ever read a short story collection that I truly gave each short story four and a half or higher. Like I've never read such a strong short story collection like this. Now I didn't give it the full five stars. I can't quite remember why. I gave it 4.75 stars. I think there was something with a couple, the last two short stories I think. But I think it's more of a person, I think it's more of a me problem though than really the short story collection itself. But I do think if I reread it physically, I definitely would give it the full five stars. But so 4.75 question mark to really a five star. But like, y'all, so, so, so good. 
so so good it's contemporary it's lithic but it's also queer a little bit of this i think there's a couple of short stories in there that have some queer queer women like we're following black women black girls in church so if you have not read it already please do and i do recommend the audiobook the the audiobook narrator did a fantastic job with each of the short stories so i recommend the next book i read um it's gonna be in one of the worst books i read this year video unfortunately and that is bitter medicine by mia sai so I hyper read this one. I listened to the audiobook and I read it physically. It is narrated by Natalie Nottis. And yeah, I this was a 2023 release. I was really looking forward to it. And it's a debut. And it's a contemporary fantasy romance, new adult. So yeah, maybe that was not the best way. But I was so optimistic though. It's written by a Taiwanese American author. We find, we have a protagonist here who is a descendant of the Chinese god of medicine and a middle child. And then we have this French half elf named Luke. I, I just, I really wanted to love it. But uh, yeah, this was not good, y'all. 2.25 stars. I did not, I don't think the world was really built that well. I didn't quite particularly love all the characters. In fact, I kind of didn't really like them. I think the only saving grace in here was actually the romance between Elle and Luke a little bit, actually. But I don't feel like the actual pacing of such of their romance was right. And in fact, actually the main guilty thing about this book that really made it so low was the pacing. And also the cringy writing as well. But really it was the pacing. The, the pacing was not good. Like, I'm like, why? Like, I'm looking at the synopsis and I'm just like, we kind of solved most of the stuff in here. Spoiler, by like halfway through the book or even two thirds, even before then actually, it's like halfway through 60%, somewhere out there. And I'm like, bruh, so then what the heck is the rest of the book for then? Like what? Like, no, the pacing of the plot was not that great. So then we added a whole nother plot or the subplot became a bigger plot. And I'm just like, nah, we don't need all this. Now granted though, I do look forward to seeing what Mia Sai could do in the future. Cause there is some potential here, but this was not really a good debut. So, uh, yeah, so I'm moving on from that. And there is another book that I've read. It's actually an e-arc, and it will come out next year, like so early in the year. Actually, the book will officially publish in a couple days as I'm recording this, but I'm not going to talk about it because it is a St. Martin's Press book, specifically a Wednesday book. So, Wednesday books book. So, yeah, I'm not going to talk about that because I'm, st I'm not going to cross the picket line for the boycott against St. Martin's Press. So if you want more details of that, I, I have a link to a TikTok that will give y'all some really good context. So I'm not gonna rate it, I'm not gonna review it. All right, now let's get into December. So since it's December sat, so I've read 11 books, uh, pages 1061, which is really low. I have not read a lot of physical or digital pages this month. And I've also listened to less audiobooks than, I mean, not as less like usual, but less than last month. And it's 69.4 hours. There's still a lot of hours, but not as much as I kind of wanted to. And the average rating was a 3.93. So, you know, not really the greatest average rating. But yeah, let's just get right into it. So the first book I read in December was Elatsaway by Darcy Little Badger. I gave this one four stars. Listen to it via audio. It's a young adult fantasy mystery book written by an indigenous author specifically uh, Lipon Apache if I remember correctly and it takes place in like a alternate futuristic United States and we're dealing with main girl here a lot away or Ellie whose cousin dies we do find like we do find out who did it pretty early on but it's not really the mystery of like who done it it's really the mystery of like where the hell is this person like we know who did it but we're trying to find where the culprit is and honestly i really did enjoy this one so i did give it four stars i didn't really love it i don't think it was amazing or anything but it was a really good story like i really like the way that we have certain parts where ellie's mother tells ellie about her one of her great grandmothers i can't remember how far back it is but one of the great grandmothers and a little bit of stories about her adventures and stuff. And I thought it was really, really cool. And I really like the involvement of the of Ellie's family in here, which I think something we could prop, I think we should see a little bit more often in young adult books is the involvement of families. So I feel like we don't get a lot of that at all, at least not the ones that tend, I tend to see, but I can definitely tell for sure that like, I really want to read more of Darcy Little Batcher's work. So I definitely want to check out Snake falls to earth and also there's a prequel novel to a lot away that's coming out next year so i'm looking forward to reading that i think it follows ellie's grandmother yeah 
I think. Or was it a great grandmother? I don't remember. So, someone in Ellie's ancestry. I'm looking forward to reading that. Then I read What Feasts at Night by T. King Fisher. This is an E arc, so thank you to Tor Nightfire for the E arc. And this is the sequel to What Moves the Dead. Now, this one I liked, but I genuinely was not totally sure what to really think about it. I rated it a three and a half. It was just interesting because What Moves the Dead is, from based on what I've heard, is the very pretty direct retelling of The Fall of the House of Escher, which I read and loved. So then when I found out it was going to be in a series, I was like, okay, cool. So then how is this going to work as a series? So it's definitely going to be more character, for sure. We're going to be following more and more on the characters. So in this sequel, we follow Alex Easton returning home to their homeland and stuff. But we're doing like this kind of like folk horror kind of thing, which is definitely a kind of horror I'm not really used to. Because I was really looking forward to this one being more gothic horror, but this was more folk horror. So I didn't quite like the direction with Guarding the Horror, and I felt it was a little bit too, too slow because I wasn't sure of what the horror is going to be. But I like the characters, though. I think the character work here is actually pretty good. And especially regarding the portrayal of PTSD or Soldier's Heart, as the novella says it as well, I think that's really, really important. So, yeah, three and a half stars. It's pretty solid. I'm definitely looking... I will read the third book. I do know it's... I'm pretty certain it's going to be a trilogy. So, yeah, it comes out November 13th. So, check it out if you have not read it already. I do recommend it. Just come in knowing that it's going to be a little bit slower on the horror and it's definitely a lot more character driven. So if you've already liked the characters for What Moves the Dead, then you're gonna like them also in What Feasts at Night, just to let y'all know. Next up, I read Voices of the Dead by Ambos Pari. It is the fourth installment in the Raven Fisher Simpson mystery series. Came out this year and I loved it, 4.75 stars. And this installment, I think we're in 1854 right now. So I think it's about three years? Yeah. Three years since the since the corruption of blood. And to be quite honest, I'm just loving every single one of these installments because I'm just here really for the characters. I'm always here for like the mysteries as well. But since I've been reading this mystery series all year, I am noticing some sort of a familiar pattern regarding like the mysteries and when we get to see certain plot twists and reveals or whatever, something like that or some sort of character reveal or something. So like there is similarities. It's still distinct enough that I don't feel like I'm getting the copy and paste of the same story every single time. But like, since I've read all of these books this year, I can notice it a lot more apparently, you know? But regardless, I really had a great time with this. I love following through with our characters. I like seeing them be more reflective and be more attentive. And I really liked the mystery here. It's definitely giving more, what was it? I think it's a different kind of murder. And I really like the twist in this one as well. And there was a certain character reveal for a character that was changing. Like, it's a side character, though. But, like, I did not see it coming, though. I was like, wait. And then I'm like, wait a minute. How did I not see it coming? It was pretty obvious when I thought about it. And I was like, bruh, I'm just here having a good time, okay? I wasn't, I ain't even trying to think. I'm just having a good time. So, yeah, I just I just really love Age of the Installment. So, this is 4.75 stars. Nothing has really reached that five stars since, like, The Way of All Flesh for me. Voices of the Dead definitely reminds me of the first book in this series. Well, the Way of All Flesh. So, yeah, I just, it was so close, though. Not quite five stars, but I loved every single installment, so it didn't even matter for me. Next up, I read The Goodbye Cat by Hiro... Arikawa, this is the a direct, not quite a direct, but it is a follow-up to the Traveling Cat Chronicles, which I did read this year. The Goodbye Cat came out this year. I give this one 3.25 stars, though. Like, I liked it. I listened to the audiobook, so it's still the same audiobook narrator, but I feel like the narration here was a lot more tolerable for me. What I didn't particularly love about this, though, was the fact that it, was, it felt less emotional for me than the Traveling Cat Chronicles. Like, the Traveling Cat Chronicles was so emotional, and I felt deeply invested in the story. But the Goodbye Cat, not so much. It's more a short story collection. Like, the Traveling Cat Chronicles felt like vignettes, interconnected vignettes, that's in a novel. But the Goodbye Cat is actually a short story collection, and I didn't really like all those short stories as much. They didn't really hit me as hard as, like, the other one. Like, I I'm sorry. Like, the first one, which was called The Goodbye Cat, I really, really loved. And then the last two I really, really loved. The other ones, I'm like, yeah, they're, you know, they're solid, fine, I guess, like threes. But the other ones were, like, really, really good. So, yeah, 
sort of disappointing. I was really looking forward to actually really loving it. I find it really emotional, but for the most part, not as emotional. So yeah, 3.25. And then now I'm going to just kind of quickly talk about the books I read for the Holiday Book Brush because honestly, I really talked about this already. So yeah, I'm not going to talk too, too much about these books because y'all can watch the vlog for my full, full thoughts. So the first book I read for that vlog was Moon of Love and I really liked it. I was surprised, honestly, but I really liked it. I read it via audio. It came out this year, surprisingly, and I'm really am looking forward actually to reading the author's sophomore novel. Give it four stars. It was really, really good. I really liked the, I really liked our protagonist and I liked the love interest, so yeah. Then I read A Holly Jolly Diwali. This one was just pretty solid. It wasn't that great, solid three stars. Read it via audio as well. But it was really cool though to read a holiday book specifically re regarding Diwali though, which is something I'm not really familiar with. So that was cool. Then I read Love Radio, which ended up being a five star. I read it as one also via audio, YA contemporary romance. I'm like, y'all, that book was really, really good. And I'm telling y'all, if you are a fan of Honey and Spice, read Love Radio. It's an adult but you, I think you'll really enjoy it regardless, okay? I'm just saying. Then I read Mangles and Mistletoe. I read it on my Kindle. I liked it, but I didn't love it. Actually, I didn't, it just wasn't really that good to me. Two and a half stars. It was a novella. It was sapphic. It had really good sex scenes, but that was kind of it, really. It's a foodie holiday romance novella. And then I read and finally finished Freedoms of Constant Struggle by Angela Y. Davis. This was a good nonfiction. It was actually a really good nonfiction, actually, but really more focusing on global solidarity and liberation movements than like really Palestine, since I really picked this up because of the fact that it's been highly recommended regarding Palestine. And you know, Palestine is definitely mentioned a lot of times in here, so I still think it's pretty informative regarding that, but it's not solely the only thing on here, so. You gotta be here for like global solidarity and for liberation movements. And it's really repetitive though. That's kind of my thing about it. It's really repetitive on that, like a lot. But what Angela Y. Davis says though is very, very important. So I still recommend it even if you have not read it yet. So definitely still though a really good foundation. And then finally, the last book that I read in 2023 was The Haunting of Alejandra by V. Castro. This book came out this year. It's a debut. I read it via audio and I gave it four stars. This really is a very unique take on generational trauma, but in literary horror, like a literary fantastical horror. Now granted though, it is indeed a very dark story though, because we do talk a lot about suicide, like suicide, suicidal thoughts, suicidal attempts. So if you're someone who can't deal with anything regarding suicidal characters, then definitely skip on the haunting of Alejandra though. Like that's such a big thing. But also another thing about it though, regarding even just themes is generational trauma is not the only theme portrayed in the haunting of Alejandra. We also do talk about motherhood and the relationships and relationships between mothers and daughters, which is what really leads to a little bit regarding the generational trauma because we do have this Mexican folklore demon called La, La, La Rona that's haunting every single woman in this fam in this family line. And each woman, at least we do get in here because we do get stories and excerpts regarding like each woman in the an Alejandra's family line and their experiences regarding being a mother or being a daughter or a daughter who's having some sort of relationship with their mother and then becoming a mother themselves. Like it's such a very interesting take regarding generational trauma, but also like motherhood and daughters and mothers and even the main character Alejandra and her relationship with her own children and even her own husband how she just feels very much unfulfilled and de and depressed and to the point that she is suicidal but then just seeing like how she needed ways she just needed to find ways to pretty much not just find a reason to really live but just finding ways so that she can feel like she's really fulfilled in life like she's so unhappy but she needed to find ways to just do with that and really seeing like this very horrifying creature like La Llorona and seeing that throughout her family line, I'm just like, damn. But the writing was really, really good though. It was really good writing. And I really like listening to the audiobook as well. And I like having these multiple POVs in here. We like, we got Alejandra with her mother, her, her relationship as well. And also like how Alejandra even grew up or like with her kids. And it was just a really good story, honestly. I was really happy that I ended 
end of the year on The Haunting of Alejandra. But anyways, yeah, that's all the books I read in December, and that's pretty much it for this wrap-up. That's all 20 books that I brought to the finish lines of 2023. Not totally sure what I'm gonna be reading in January. I sort of have an idea, but I also am not totally sure, because again, mood reader, but... We'll see what January brings for me. But anyways, if y'all like this video, please like it. If you want to subscribe, you can subscribe. Comment down below what books have y'all read in November, December. Thoughts, opinions on the books I've read. Anything. If you've made it this far into the video and you want to leave me an emoji instead, leave me a snowflake emoji because it literally snowed today and the snow stuck to the ground. Like, wow. This, like, Minnesota said some, oh, we're not going to end the year without snow. Y'all gonna get some snow. Why? Anyways, thank you all for coming on to this video, and I hope to see you all in my next one. Bye.